when we take in folic acid, it's in all white flour, white rice, white bread, white pasta, all of our Is it grains, good for us? all of our cereals. It's horrible for you. So you don't want folic acid. No, we don't want folic acid. Folic acid doesn't occur Is anywhere that, naturally in nature. But does that red say I don't process it? You That's do good. not process it. That's no, good. No, you do not process it. So you can't turn it into the active form that your body needs. You see, there's not a single compound known to mankind, not one, that enters the human body that's used in the format that we put it in. Everything that enters the human body gets converted into its usable form, right? This conversion is called methylation, right? It's like we pull crude oil out of the ground, but you can't put crude oil directly into your gas tank, right? Because the car doesn't understand that fuel source. Crude oil has to be refined into gasoline. Well, that refining process in the human body is called methylation. And if your methylation is broken, you get things like anxiety, anxiousness, depression, ADD, ADHD, OCD. You have trouble falling asleep because your mind keeps you awake. Now, now would I be an anomaly if I said none of those? No. Even no. with a red? Well, because you're probably not eating a lot of folic acid. I bet you're yeah. Diet is not full of white bagels, white rice, no, white a lot of low pasta, carb. white white flour. If you if you were eating a lot of grains, flours, breads, pastas, um, whites, you would it would be a disaster for you. So the it's one of the leading causes of postpartum depression in pregnant females because sadly, what happens is forty four percent of women have this gene mutation too, and then they get pregnant, and the doctor tells them to take high doses of folic acid. Even, even though folic acid doesn't occur anywhere naturally in nature, it doesn't occur anywhere on the surface of the earth, right? They, they say, take this unnatural man-made chemical because it'll prevent neural tube defects. Well, 44% of the population can't process it. So when they take 1,400% of the daily allowance of, of folic acid, they get depressed. And, and then eventually the pregnancy ends and, and they stop taking the prenatal vitamin and the symptoms go away. So they blame it on the pregnancy, not on the vitamin. Mm. And, and this is true with so many different conditions in the human body. You know, there are a lot of genetically inherited diseases. We call genetically inherited diseases, but no physician can tell you what gene is being passed from generation to generation to cause those diseases to be inherited. And if there isn't a gene associated with it, well, then it's not genetic. And we've mapped the entire human genome. There are no genes in the human body we're unaware of. So if there was a gene that caused a specific disease, we'd know that like the BRCA gene, you know, predisposes women to breast cancer. Number one, um, the pills you sent me. Yes. The five, five methylfolate. Yeah. The five methylfolate. So I just start taking one of you those. You call them the morning. five motherfucker pills. Yeah. It's well, five MTHF. <laughs> yeah. Well that I call that the motherfucker gene. It is the motherfucker gene. <laughs> so I got the motherfucker gene. So the, these pills, if I take it, then now I will process folic acid as it should be. It's not that you'll process folic acid is that we're, we're not going to give you crude oil. We're going to give you gasoline. In other words, since your body can't refine folic acid into methylfolate, we're just going to give you methylfolate. But should I stop? Should I take in as low amounts as I can? Yes, I would take in as little folic acid as you can. Think about this, you know, we, we when we started spraying the grain supply in 1992, the US federal government decided we would spray our entire grain supply with folic acid, this man-made chemical. And so all grains, all, all rice, all flour, we, we don't call it sprayed with folic acid, we call it fortified or enriched, right? So if you spin a box of crackers around, you see the words fortified or enriched, that means sprayed with folic acid. Mm. Okay. So now let's take a child, six, seven, eight years old, nine years old, and they're getting ready for school in the morning. They have this gene mutation and you've pumped them full of folic acid laden foods. Think about what we feed kids, pop tarts, white bagels, cocoa puffs, um, cocoa puffs, cereals, right? Any of those things. Now you just dumped folic acid into their body. And you wonder why it's a full contact sport to get the kid in the car to go to school. And then by the time they get to school, this you know, the teacher's calling and saying, hey, little Johnny can't, he can't pay attention. He doesn't concentrate, doesn't focus. He doesn't finish his assignments. He's not following directions. He's got ADHD. We need to bring in the Ritalin to control this. And the truth is ADHD is, is not even an attention deficit disorder at all. It's an attention overload disorder. Kids and, and adults that have this condition of, of attention deficit or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, they don't have a problem paying attention. They have a problem paying attention to too many things. And in our mind, we not only create thought, but we also dismantle thought. 
It is just as important to be able to dismantle the neurotransmitters of thought as it is to create the neurotransmitters of thought. Because if I am creating thought at a faster rate than I'm dismantling it, then I have too many conversations going on in my head, right? So if you have ADD, then you're thinking about a job that you're working on and your friend walks up and you start talking to your friend while you're thinking about this job you're working on and then you notice a logo on their jacket and that reminds you of a vacation you want to take. So now you're thinking about a job, talking to your friend, looking at the logo, thinking about a vacation you want to take. You know, and all of a sudden your friend goes, hey man, my grandma passed away on Sunday. And you go, that's a great idea. Because you're not tuned into that conversation because your mind's everywhere else. And then what the modern medicine wants to do is give you an amphetamine to speed up, race the central nervous system to match the pace of the mind. Instead of putting just amino acids into the bloodstream that allow the mind to naturally quiet itself. You know, this gene mutation right here, COMT, if that gene mutation is read, you are highly susceptible to ADD, ADHD, OCD, depressive symptoms. Yellow's on the way to red? Yellow's on its way to red, but it'll never be red in your case. Once it's yellow, it's always yellow. So and, 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 and so, you, what would make that flawless like my blood? Well, you, you can't fix the genes. You can supplement for their function, right? So I can't fix those genes. The, the genes you're born with are the genes you die with, but you can supplement for their function. If yeah. MTHFR converts folic acid into methylfolate, you just supplement with methylfolate. There's certain forms of B12 in the middle here that if people are supplementing with the wrong form of B12, they're destroying their gut function, right? The most common form of B12 in the world is entirely synthetic. It's man-made. We make it from hydrogen cyanide. It's called cyanocobalamin. It's a cyanide-based B12. I mean, it's hard to believe that we're allowed to make vitamins out of hydrogen cyanide in this country, but we are. Flintstone vitamins have cyanocobalamin. So um, do airborne. So do Celsius energy drinks, right? Um, that's why, what's that? Emergency. Yeah, emergency has cyanocobalamin, cyanide-based B12. So when you put this form of B12 into the body, it drops off the cobalt metal, the cobalamin, right? Which is B12 is a metal, a light metal. It drops off the metal into the cell, and then you're left with a floating cyanide molecule. Now, the body doesn't recognize that. So in order for cyanide to leave the system, it binds to oxygen and other light metals and takes them out of the system. It's a thief, right? Like folic acid is a thief. But we've been led to believe, oh, folic acid prevents neural tube defects in pregnant women. And folic acid is a necessary part of the human diet. It's a, there's a recommended daily allowance of folic acid. I don't know how we have a recommended daily allowance of something that was never on the face of the earth until a laboratory made it. I mean, how could it be essential for, for health if we actually made it in a lab? Can, can those pills be taken by my kids? Oh, no question they can be taken by your kids. It works with Any the gummies age? all the way down to two years old. So they can chew and swallow. But I mean, is there, a, is there like a, an amount I'm, I, you prescribe oh, yes, to me? Oh, yes, it's appropriate for their So uh, you don't weight. give your kids your no. D, D5-methylionamide? No. In fact, you know, right on here, um, I got a chart that actually you gives you the ages. Tested, correct? It says age 4 to 8, 9 to 13, 14 to 18. You should definitely have your kids tested. You only do the test once in your life. Most of us are supplementing just for the sake of supplementing. So gene right? test, folks, I'm telling you right now, go get a gene test. That, that's life-changing. And you don't go to 10X Health Systems for that. You go to at Gary Brecca on Instagram and DM his ass, right? Yeah, just DM me and I all. I can't believe you don't have a page or something, though. No, you can get it at, at 10X Health System, too. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, me the one. Well, I just want to make sure people have the the clear tactical to to because a lot of this is interesting. People are like, "Yeah, that might be me. I got kids mm -hmm. like that." Da da da. And then, and oh, then if you've got kids with ADD, ADHD, OCD, if you've got depression, if you have anxiety, uh, in in my my my, two, my little girl has anxiety. Like, dude, I'm telling you, sometimes I think to myself, like. Like what is she no, doing? No, she has a gene mutation that doesn't allow her to, it doesn't allow her to methylate something called homocysteine. I'll tell you three things about so her anxiety get her without a gene even test. Know. No question. And then you guys will prescribe her the 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 right vitamins, amount the of stuff, and then she'll take her it weight, and her problem will go away. No question. If you if you ask somebody that's suffering from anxiety three questions, you can prove that it's not coming from a cluster of symptoms. It's not coming from their outside environment. It's coming from their physiology. So the first question you ask them is, have you, have you suffered from anxiety on and off throughout your entire lifetime? Almost always they will say yes. 
And then the second question is, can you point to the specific trigger that causes it? Can you always just point to the specific trigger that's causing your anxiety? And the majority of the time they'll say, no, I can just wake up in the morning feeling anxious. I can, I can be driving home from work on an otherwise innocuous day and I can be overwhelmed with anxiety. Um, and it must be a crazy feeling too. It's terrible because it drives them crazy because they don't know what's causing it. I mean, they can be in a calm environment like this. You know, my son's sitting there, you and I are just shooting the, shooting the shit. And all of a sudden I'm just overwhelmed with anxiety. It doesn't make sense to me psychologically because I go, well, there's nothing for me to be afraid of right now. Why do I have this fight or flight response? This, this lo looming death feeling. Yeah. But it's, a, but it's a lack of raw material in the human body. When you start pulling raw materials out of the human body, which by the way, can be put back in, then you get the appearance of all kinds of pathology and diseases, hypertension, ADD, ADHD, manic depression, bipolar, um, depression, anxiety, anxiousness. All of these conditions that we think happen to us are actually happening within us because you deplete the body of raw materials. You know, we define depression in this country as an inadequate supply of serotonin, right? So if your serotonin is low, you're by definition depressed. So you would think the treatment would be to raise serotonin, but that's not what we do. We take people that are depressed and we put them on SSRIs, serotonin reuptake inhibitors, right? And what these do is they ration what little serotonin you have Right, so by definition, it never raises serotonin. So by definition, it never ends depression. So any depressions by their own definition will never end depression. They will just keep it from getting worse. They'll keep you from going off a cliff. Um, so if we understood that serotonin is a raw material, it's made in the gut. 90% of the serotonin in our body is right here. If it's not here, it can't be here. So if I wanna end depression, I need to turn the serotonin factory back on in the gut. By putting the raw materials, B complex, methylated folates, B vitamins, hydroxycobalamin, L-methionine, zincs, magnesiums, back into the human body so it can produce neurotransmitters. Did you, is that part of all that shit you sent me? Yes. Mm -hmm. So all I got to do is take it. All you have to do is take it. Uh, there's, we're not adding anything to your bloodstream that's not already in your blood right now. We're just changing the form and the amount Mm. right that's it hormonal balance hormonal balance and the body Overall works balance. fine that's it